And I guess we can go to the next speaker, who is Ulrike Fischer, whom we thank for organizing this magnificent conference. And we mustn't forget the bear assistant, Gert, of course. And <laughs> Ulrike will talk about automatic tagging of LaTeX document. What is possible today? Hello? Huh? No? You need to switch it on. Jeez. Okay. Now? Yes. Fine, fine. And the Beamaster. Okay. Where can I put it? Better? Yes? Okay. Okay. Welcome to my talk. I'm Ulrike Fischer, everyone knows that, I think. <laughs> I'm a member of the LaTeX team, and I'm now here to report about the progress that we're making in the TED PDF project. What is tagging? You just saw this in was talk, so I don't have to explain anything. Tagging adds structure to a PDF. Um, this improves accessibility and the reuse of data of the PDF because PDF is basically a graphic format and so not really structured. Um, if you want to know details about the implementation or how this actually works and what code is needed to do it, um, please look up previous talks, articles or the documentation of the tech PDF package. But as a short motivation, I would like to show a screenshot of one of my bank statements. Since a few months, this bank statement is tagged. It's a quite simple document. Basically, it's only a large table with three columns. The date, a multi-line description, and the amount. If you can see in the screen, there's one uh, transaction here made this year some uh, sponsorship for Koti in the zoo in Mönchengladbach. And um, it's quite, the tagging is quite simple. There's a TR for the row and a TD for the, for the various cells. It's quite similar to what you get in HTML. So that's how such structure is looking. What are the benefits? If you read with a screen reader, like in VDA, an untagged PDF, I had this last year, then the order is simply messy. It will read the date, and then a part of the description, then the amount, and then the rest of the description in one everything, in one go. You can't really know when you hear it what is going on in this table. When it's tagged, the order is correct. It will read first the date, then the description, then the amount. And it will also tell you where you are in the table. It will tell you, I'm now reading row 10 or cell column 3. So you can also ask which header has this column, so that you really know what is the data. You also, if you copy and paste in a spreadsheet, and if you do this with an untagged PDF, you simply get everything in one column. It's, and then the order is messy too. The amount is somewhere in the middle. You have everything in column and it's actually not usable. If you do it with a tagged PDF, the data is correctly split over three columns. You can see a screenshot. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can squeeze a screenshot here that um, the date and the description and the amount has been correctly placed in the screenshot. 
That means the data is reusable. Scripts can use it if they want it. So we think it's important to get tagging in LaTeX. The goal of the tag PDF package is at first to make tagging with LaTeX possible at all. That is done. If you really want to tag a PDF, you can do it. There is no pro manual work, but it works. But naturally, normal users don't want to do complicated code, so it should also be automatic and easy to use. That's part of the tech PDF project. Before telling you what we are currently able to do in automatic tagging, I will describe a few of the problems that we saw in um, the last year while working on it. One problem is that PDF viewers actually don't show text. The screenshot was from Acrobat Pro. Ross used Acrobat Pro 2, and that costs money, and it's not something that many users have. So what they don't see, they don't want, or they don't think it's important. There's some complain that copy and paste doesn't work, but actually they don't know that it's a missing text, text or that, that are the problem. It's changing a bit. Currently, we found a viewer PDF exchange actually now show text. There's also a PDF fix application, which actually meant to add text to an untagged document, but can be used too as viewer. So there's some hope that something is changing here, but the best is complain to your PDF viewer. He should show you the text of a tag document. Without this, it's also difficult for the developers to really make, you have to look what structure did I produce, and without seeing them, that's not easy. Second problem, I should store here, that appeared during the last year is actually the missing PDF to zero support. PDF to zero is now more than six years old. It has Important features for tagging, a better tag set, structure destinations to allow to make a link, not to some place on a page, but to a specific structure. It knows associated files to aid additional data to a structure. That's important for mass tagging because you can, for example, add the source or the MassML to the mass formula. And it also knows the MassML namespace, which is important for mass tagging too. We can create PDF to zero. Everything is implemented, but actually no PDF viewer correctly supports this. Not even Acrobat. It doesn't, isn't able to handle namespaces and associated files are simply lost and so on. Um, here again, we only can hope that if we, to resolve this chicken problem by producing PDF to zero, complaining that it doesn't work, so that at the end the viewer start to support this correctly. The next problem that appeared was parent child rules. PDF has contains lots of rules which structure is allowed and which structure. You can't do a P in a P, but you can't put a spam in a P. But so here the short ex extract of such a rule is, at the beginning the tech PDF figure, we simply made it manually. You know, we decided this is not, but that didn't work out in the long run, so now the um, have been implemented uh, automatic tests which really check every time you add a structure if this structure is really allowed here and gives you lots of warnings. Um, this was quite some work and uh, then avoiding that you violate the rules is not always trivial because the PDF model is not quite identical to the LaTeX model of a document. Now, let's go to what is possible today. The next milestone that we set, we did set to us is the tagging of so-called Leslie Lamford documents. These are documents 
which more or less follow the descriptions of this book. Yeah? So what is here, here described here should be possible to uh, tag automatically. This means use of standard classes, currently article, book, and report. Um, standard commands in environments like lists and so on. Um, only a quite restricted set of packages. One exception is HypoF. HypoF is always kept in sync, in sync with uh, tagging, so I always try as soon as add something to ensure that HypoF works too, even if it wasn't described in this book. So what is possible today? With today, just to make sure, I mean a current LaTeX. LaTeX from June, not last year. <laughs> so. The supported engines, really supported engines, are PDF LaTeX and Lua LaTeX. Um, DVI mode is difficult, Xilatic is difficult. Um, you can try it, but actually there's no guarantee. Recommended is Lua LaTeX. It produces the best tagging. The new code we are currently developing is in a um, special bundle of the LaTeX repo called LaTeX Lab for laboratory, so it shows you it's in development and then some sometimes experimental, it works, but you should expect that it changes if, when, if you find errors. And the code is currently loaded with a test phase key, again to indicate that this is something we are working on. So currently we have a phase three, um, this is what I will describe here, mostly in the document. You have to load it before the document class. There's explicit trigger. If you want tagging, you have to tell the document. I want tagging by using this document metadata command. So the first paragraphs and links already worked last year. I described this in the talk I talked there. Um, that's implemented with the new power hooks, which are quite useful and works fine. The main problem is if you use this, that sometimes you need really to ensure that the tagging is balanced and that you have a similar number of starting paragraphs as end paragraphs, which is, if you do low level coding can sometimes fail. Uh, but nevertheless, you can, this, there's not much problem here. Footnotes have been implemented some time ago too. Um, here, the footmiss package can be used. That we are trying to keep in change because Frank is maintaining it. Um, so we have already a replacement. Other footnote packages won't work. Um, mini page footnotes, footnotes uh, have to be handled, are not yet hand fully handled. So, new is the sectioning. Here, the PDF model actually wants that there is a sect structure around the heading and uh, the body of the section. So we have really around everything, something that it's not really natural to LaTeX because we don't have something like start section, stop section. So we have only so it has to be out detected automatically. This works if you don't do too curious stuff. It works quite good. Um, it's to implement it, various internal latex commands have to be changed. For example, start section and sect. And this, this means that classes and packages that override these commands again break the tagging. For example, currently the memoir class, the coma classes, but I heard there's some work going on to change this, and the title sec package is also not compatible. Table of contents are now supported too, and similar lists like list of figure or everything that is built on top of StarTalk. 
Um, here too, the PDF model wants lots of nesting. So if you have uh, a subjection in the with entries, there is a new talk in a talk, and so on. So lots of uh, nesting going on. But again, as long as you don't try to insert uh, special code in the middle of the table of contents, uh, it uh, doesn't break. Um, it changed again a lot of internals of LaTeX. For example, start talk or a contents line is not an internal, but a correlative command, dotted cut line, and similar. And again, classes that change this command or define them themselves, like the L chapter command is typically a class command, um, don't work currently. But most changes, if a class wants to get compatible here, it's not really difficult. Display environments and lists, there, that's a large block because um, Lots of LaTeX environments are built on top of TIFF lists, and so are internally a list. So we have here center, quotation, verbatim, theorems, and so on. Um, from the semantic viewpoint, they are quite different. You don't want to uh, tag a center environment as a list or verbatim environment. So we, they have to actually to get different tagging receipts. Uh, to um, here, there's a complete new implementation based on X template. So all old uh, list code is gone. Uh, block environments like center and verbatim are actually no longer lists. This means every package that builds or assumes old list code. Uh, does, is not compatible, including important packages like enum item or fancy verbatim listings. Um, naturally, there have to be replacements for this. Yeah? It's clear that this doesn't should stay so. <laughs> uh, so. Citations and bibliography. Uh, uh, supported too. Here the tagging is actually not complicated. Basically, you want a link between the citation and the BIP entry, and, and the bibliography itself is a list. So there is nothing complicated going on. Um, NetBIP here is supported as external package. BIPLATEC is supported too, as long as you use HyperF. Without HyperF, there is a hook missing to add to inject the code, but it should be easy to convince a bibliotech maintainer to change this. Graphics are also tech now. Here is something that cannot be done automatically. If you want to make a graphic accessible, you have to add some alternative text so that someone who can cannot see it, knows what is in the graphic. Um, currently, we support the inclick graphics command, and we, we saw the picture environment. Both now know an optional argument and an alt key to add this alternative text. Uh, text is not yet supported, but um, that will change soon. Uh, Henry Menke is here, and I think we can convince him to help us. Floats. Floats can also be used currently only in the standard floats, figure and table, but it's not difficult to add support for more floats. Um, a bit surprisingly, when I tested the caption package, seems to work in some cases. I'm not sure if it has so many options, so it's quite possible that somewhere it breaks. But actually, one can try to use a caption package and look what structure you get. Um, the float package on the other side is certainly incompatible because it changes the exclude command again. That means that currently you can't use H floats, the floats that are not floats, if you want tagging. Um, margin parse 
uh, theoretically also a float op, really a float, and that isn't supported yet either. There's a bit of problem because margin par has two code parts depending on which side of the page it wants to appear. That makes the handling, the technical implementation, a bit difficult. Hmm. Mini page and par box are simply diffs and they're tagged. Um, simple cases should work quite well. Uh, if you start to do very complex stuff with many pages, uh, you probably still will get errors, and then some feedback would be nice so that we can correct this. Mass. Mass, there is some implementation for mass, but um, it's quite experimental, and so currently you have to load it with an additional test fees, text test fees command. Um, it works by grabbing the whole mass and then processing it. Um, it will, for example, break if you do your own mass commands. If you uh, shortcut and say BA, a, BA for begin equation, and it will uh, error. Um, and there is still the option possibility that it affects a code that isn't meant to be mass. For example, currently URLs are suddenly mass when you load it, which isn't quite what you want to expect. Um, the tagging is quite um, simple-minded currently due to the missing PDF to zero support. We actually don't really know what would be good tagging here because the support in the processors is not there. Um, we have also started a first aid module for the test phase, which contains, yeah, I'm going to be a first aid uh, module for the tagging, which um, uh, loads uh, small fixes to packages. As soon as I find something, I do it and try to put either to contact the package author or to add a first aid, and you can, if something break, you can look if there is some correction in this module. What is missing? Missing is currently saving in the using of boxes. So you can't use, or only very carefully use save box and use box, even more if they contain a structure, then it's very hard. It's really not trivial. I'm working on it, but this will take some time. What is also missing is I started with an example with tables. And table support is currently missing, mostly because the interface, the tagging itself is not so complicated, but finding a good LaTeX interface to mark headers. Currently, our tabulars simply don't tell you where are the headers of a table. We need an interface here. We started a discussion about this in the tagging work talk. Okay, as a summary, you can now already tag <coughs> quite a large amount of documents. We would be very grateful if you try it and if you report errors. We have open and GitHub just for errors, also errors with external packages so that we correct and extend, can correct and extend this com code. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ulrike. Uh, questions? Thank you, Ulrike. Uh, a question about float package. It provides a very nice um, uh, functionality of adding floats with new float. If, uh, if we use it only with this functionality, will it still break tagging? And if yes, how? Sorry, I, did, I don't understand. <laughs> what did I break? <laughs> okay. Uh, the nice thing about float package, which is incompatible, yeah. is that you can add new kinds of floats. Yeah. If we use only this functionality, will it still break tagging? And if yes, what can we do? Should we provide our own 
new well, fluid we will have to find a replacement for floats um, to add new floats. It should be the possibly, rather possibly easy. Possibly the new float package. A new float based on caption, and so it might. Yeah, we have to look. I mean, we we know that people want a new float types, and naturally we will have to support it. Yeah, but 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 actually, I mean, in the slide it says currently incompatible. Yeah. The intention of the word currently is is really to say yes. Uh, it is, I would say, fairly trivial to make the float package be tagging aware. It means working either with the author of the float package or, which probably in this case means providing an updated float package that supports tagging as well, which we currently can do, for example, with something like Simple8. We have this wonderful, uh, nice hook mechanism to say if a certain package is loaded after the package do something. The hook can actually be somewhere and that allows a lot of overrides to existing packages as a first step. So I think the answer is documents having float package loaded will eventually just work. Eventually means after the phase where we ensure that Lamport documents work <laughs> and then a little bit additional. But no, nobody should use a, a uppercase H float, so. <laughs> <laughs> so there are two questions from the internet. Um, one of them is, are those changes going to stay optional or, are, or will they be a mandatory part of the later kernel eventually? They will wander in some sense into the latest kernel, yes. The main question is the timeline. So naturally, at the end, you will always ha you will have only to load document metadata and perhaps to say activate tagging, and then that should that is a plan. Currently, is we you have to say it with test phase key, but it's called test phase to show that it's part of a test phase and not the final phase. Yeah, so. Okay, and second question, can we expect the text PDF package to work out of the box without normalizing or standardizing these sources? Sources? Sources, yeah. So can we expect the text PDF package to work out of the box without normalizing or standardizing the sources? Um, so in part. Um, no, I, I know enough sources to know that uh, some of them are quite wild and will probably never work. Because really you have to stand, uh, if you want something as a standard, and then you have to standardize some codes. Some code have, will have to be corrected. Uh, if your code is clean enough, uh, um, then uh, you will simply have to load the document metadata command and he, will, he already loads the tag PDF package yeah, and activates tagging. And um, you, normal document should work out of the box. Perhaps you will have to add alternative text to uh, prefix, but um, then it will work. But wild code, uh, in my opinion, needs to be punished. Yes, so. One question, I don't understand how you're going to proceed. <coughs> Will you have to do all the work as a LaTeX team on your own, or might the class and package maintainers help? You, you mentioned something to make, to make packages and document classes tagging aware or something like that. Yeah. Could, you, could you elaborate a little bit? Well, so we need the help of the package and class maintainer. We started, Marai just said she will work on Coma. Um, other package, every package maintainer who wants to help and wants to know how can I make my package compatible with this code can contact us and then certainly we can't rewrite all 5,000 packages on CTAN, yes? Uh, so, that, that will be some we will have to do because the authors are, are no longer there. 
but every active maintainer will have to help us. Yeah? Sure. Yes, no. Another question. So, but Joseph, uh, okay, one minute. If I'm a package maintainer and I'm interested in supporting tagging in my packages, should I first rewrite my packages in LaTeX 3? No, no or need. It, it's I not easier to support tagging in LaTeX 3? Commands are in both, and if you really want a command also in, you perhaps you need a short stuff to make an alias, but you don't need express V. We are writing in it because it's easier and faster, but there's absolutely no reason why you should uh, be forced if you don't like it, no. You should be able to read it, perhaps, so that you understand our code, but you don't need to write it. Okay, they, now, uh, sorry, I have to give 